Welcome back to the show. Now, our next guest in the studio is the founder of an organization called Do The Most, a fantastic, wonderful organization that she has worked tirelessly hard over in these years, and her name is Paula Jacobson. Hi, Paula. Welcome Hello. to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Now, I haven't seen you for a while, um, but I've seen you work hard throughout the, the past years and months um, to get to this point. Yeah. to have such a wonderful um, organisation. Tell us more about how you worked hard to bring it to this point. Well, I left a corporate job last year because I was so passionate about doing something that made an impact on society and the planet and founded this business so I could become a people, culture and impact consultant. So the mission of my business is to help other businesses make their work more meaningful. I like Incredible. It. So can you tell us also about Show Thing uh, Surf Therapy? Because I believe it's through that branch of your company that you're doing the paddle out for COP28. Yeah, so that's my kind of, I have a, an umbrella you know, business and under that I have um, non-profit work that I like to do. So this is my own work that I take my time out to do for ocean conservation and mental health. And on Sunday, we're gathering at JA the resort to have a paddle out, okay. which is going to be the only event happening in the ocean during COP28. Okay, can you explain to us what a paddle out is? Because I know from surfing, but yeah. maybe like some people won't know what, what do you paddle out, out that, that, that? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, it is that? Yeah, exactly oh, oh, that. Okay. Yeah. So traditionally, I, th I believe it came from Hawaii um, and Polynesia and that kind of area, but surfers would paddle together out into the ocean and form kind of a circle and have a ceremony and sometimes they would do it when another surfer passed away but in recent years people do it to kind of honour certain causes like ocean conservation and that kind of thing so this actual event is to promote awareness for ocean conservation in this region and really to show people that are coming to COP28 that there is a huge community of ocean lovers in the UAE and that we're, we're getting together to, to celebrate and have a real positive experience with each other. Paula, I'm curious. So I was on um, a panel at COP and they were talking about how um, initially a lot of companies were sort of using impact as a marketing exercise and weren't actually, I mean, it was sort of a feel good um, exercise. What are you seeing now in terms of that shift since you're helping them do it? How serious are they getting and what kinds of things are they doing? So my, my route into helping businesses make their work more meaningful is to do it through employee engagement. So my background is with HR, people and culture, and I believe you have to galvanise employees to make the, the kind of impact kind of come together and the strategy come together. So I think sometimes companies do it with their marketing teams, which is great. Uh, marketing teams are super creative, but having the support of your whole workforce is, is key really to kind of driving those um, initiatives and also doing stuff that actually resonates with the people that you work with as well. So what's an example of something that maybe company, a company that wants to make impact can do? So there was a client I had who is a recruitment agency in this, in this region. They have a, an office in South Africa and they were working on a program to help make jobs more accessible to um, a demographic in South Africa near their office and you know teaching people how to write their CVs properly um, so really kind of making the inclusivity in the job market and helping advance people's careers. Wow. Paula, um, I see here that you also do something with the Plant Champions program. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, thank you. Um, I was recently nominated by Expo City Dubai to be a Planet Champion. So this is a three week program they're running throughout COP28. And what we're doing is sharing the pledge for people and planet. So we're asking people to sign the pledge and to kind of help us make changes to our everyday lives, similar to what you were talking about earlier. And really just to show people what the work that we're doing as ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. So how did you feel when you actually got selected to actually be that champion? <laughs> I was absolutely thrilled, to be honest. This is kind of something that I have on my vision board at home because COP28 is one of the most exciting events for someone like me who's kind of been working on this stuff for a long time. And to have someone recognise that you are, you are working hard is really sort of touching and a massive, amazing organisation like Expo City as well. 
So yeah, I was thrilled. Amazing. Paula, we definitely recognise you as well. So thank you very much for your impactful work, but also for joining us in the studios here today. Thank you. Thanks. Now, I got the chance to go down to the Startup Village at the Innovation Hub in the Green Zone at Dubai Expo City to learn all about the latest climate technologies and collaborations with leaders and innovators. Check it out. I am down here at Expo City at the COP28 Startup Village. 150 high growth organizations from around the world are here to showcase what they are doing for climate change and environment. The best thing about it, it's just a collaboration between businesses, investors, government and policy makers. Let's check out what they've got for us. I'm here with the CEO and co-founder of Gecko Robotics, Mr. Jake Lusrarian. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, Gecko Robotics builds uh, artificial intelligence software that's actually enabled by robotics. You can kind of see them climbing up on the walls and then we have a dog robot outside. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, what we do with that information and data that we collect with robots is help to predict when the built world might fail or have catastrophic failures. Um, so quite impactful as it relates to all the things that we're talking about here at COP. Incredible. And what's been the impact here at COP? Well, I think the impact is the access to such incredible business leaders. So I've had a lot of bilaterals with uh, in energy leaders, um, as well as manufacturing and government leaders that are directly applicable and are looking for technology that our, our company can help supply. I'm here with the manager of Avant. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks so much for being with us today. Can you tell us a little bit more about Avant? Uh, yes, of course. Um, so we are Avant. We are a biotech startup. Uh, we focus on cultivated meats, uh, particularly cultivated fish. Uh, we have a couple of uh, bases uh, around the world, uh, one in Hong Kong and one in Singapore. Amazing. And tell us a little bit about how biodegradable fish and the cultivation of it is contributing to a more sustainable world. As far as sustainability is concerned, now we know that uh, our seas today are overfished and uh, we also pollute the seas a lot. So these fish are also eating the same pollutants that we throw into the sea. So what we have done with our fish is we don't have any of these pollutants in, the, in our products. We don't have antibiotics, we don't have microplastics and uh, heavy metals. So uh, that's how we I suppose, uh, indirectly contribute to sustainability, at least in the fishing industry. I am joined by the CEO and co-founder of Living Carbon, Maddie Hall. Maddie, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Of course. Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about Living Carbon? Yeah, so Living Carbon is a climate change biotech company that develops trees that capture and store more carbon. So you can actually see the trees behind you right here. Um, they're photosynthesis enhanced trees that grow faster, capture more CO2, and do well in high temperature and drought conditions. Oh, incredible. And how is this um, contributing towards a sustainable world? Yeah, so we specifically focus on deploying our trees on land where trees don't have a high rate of natural regeneration. So sites of human degradation, abandoned mine lands, degraded agricultural land. Those are the areas in which we're planting our photosynthesis enhanced trees, which allow those trees to and that land to naturally have um, more carbon being sequestered and the ecosystem restored. Incredible. And what's been your experience with COP28 so far? How are you finding it? COP28 has been crazy, honestly. Um, it's very exciting because there is so much, but it's also a little bit overwhelming because there's so much to see and do. Um, we came to COP because we really wanted to understand what the international demand for our trait and technology looked like. So getting a sense of what's the most important when thinking about tree planting on degraded land, what traits and technologies does the international community and especially the Global South um, and Middle East very interested in us working on. And we've learned a lot about the importance of drought resilience in the type of trees and technologies that we develop in the future. 
Once again, the UAE's commitment to technology and innovation remains unprecedented with the very own Startup Village showcasing 150 high growth startups from around the world that are combating environmental climate change and many, many more um, right here at COP28 in Expo City, Dubai. Some incredible interviews there, Dua. Congratulations. Now, as we explore COP28 this week, our very busy bee, Dua, caught up with the Minister for Environment of Western Australia to find out their initiatives towards achieving net zero emissions in the region. So this is Reese Whitby. Check it out. Honourable Mr. Rhys Whitby, thank you very much for joining us on DXB today. Wonderful to be here. You're very welcome. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about Australia's stance on climate action mm. and what you're doing here in COP28. Well, it's very interesting because I represent Western Australia, which is a third of the Australian continent. So it's a very large landmass. So we have the things you need to create renewable energy. We have lots of sunshine, mm. uh, lots of uh, wind and lots of space. Uh, lot like uh, UAE. So we're very blessed with natural resources for renewable energy. We're also a major producer of fossil fuels. So we're one of the world's biggest exporters of liquefied natural gas. Wow. So we have a responsibility, I think, to continue to provide energy to the planet, but also to decarbonise. So we're facing many of the same challenges, many Gulf states are, in terms of being a reliable source of energy, but also decarbonisation. So it's very challenging um, and uh, we have many energy intensive industries in Western Australia, but we are on a path for net zero by 2050. We're legislating it in our parliament uh, and we're setting interim targets, but it's a, it's a big job ahead. But the rewards on the other side for a, for a nation or a state or a province that can produce reliable uh, renewable energy and have those natural resources in abundance to produce it is a very positive opportunity and a very positive future. So big challenges, but big opportunities also. So before we started rolling, we were talking about how mm. this COP specifically in yeah. Dubai yeah. is very different to previous COPs yeah. in the past. How has your experience been over here in Dubai's COP? Some COPs achieve more than others, and I'm very hopeful that uh, COP28 will achieve more than previous COPs. Uh, but regardless of the outcomes, um, we want good outcomes, mm -hmm. but regardless, we need to keep talking, we need to keep cooperating. So it's wonderful to see all the nations of the world represented here with their own solutions, their own input to the system. So we need to continue the conversation, it's very vital. Yeah, absolutely. And what's been the impact of this dialogue and this continued dialogue? Mm. I know this COP specifically in Dubai promises action. Have you seen um, that impact? Well, I'll be waiting to see what uh, the nations come together in the in the final week, the second week of COP is where the, you know, the real work is done and the uh, the achievements uh, and the ambitions are uh, put on the table. And as a sub-national jurisdiction, uh, I'm, a, I'm an observer of that process. But uh, I think it's important that every COP takes us further on the journey. Every COP has progress and I'm, I'm very hopeful that COP28 will have progress. Thank you very much for joining us on DXB today. You're very welcome. Thank you. It's about that time for our daily roundup and our delightful doer has the scoop. Dee, what's good? So some interesting personalities that have come to COP that you wouldn't expect, i.e. not politicians or world leaders, Bassem Youssef, Will and Jada Smith, and Stella McCartney. What? Yes. Hold on a minute. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but, uh, oh. She's got a stand there. That's one thing I do know about COP28 <laughs> is that she, she's got a stand there for Who uh, has? sustainable Stella. fashion. Ah, yes. that makes oh, sense. That makes yeah, sense. Hey. But Will and Jada, is, yeah. it, is it a thing? I, I don't know. Do we just say Will Smith and Jada Pinkett? Yeah. We say like. We say it separately. We say it separately. We now. say it separately, okay. okay. But they're there, they were there. They're there. Together yeah. or separately? <laughs> <laughs> But we all don't of, know. We can't. But all of these it. people are there, though. It seems like it's the place to be. I mean, like Dubai is so busy at the moment because it's the it's the season. Yeah. Um, and with COP being there, obviously people are just going to want to go there and see what it's about, see what see what, who's there as as well. So yeah. 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 Basam Yusuf was great as well. Um, he opened. Um, 
well, one of his jokes was around, uh, isn't it ridiculous that everyone comes to the COP conference every year just to decide how to agree not to hurt the climate anymore? And um, I'm really a fan of his dark comedy and, and it's true what he's saying. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But as well as all these like COP uh, related celebrities that are flying in, there is just generally in the UAE so many celebs mm -hmm. sauntering around. I believe Kanye is here, mm -hmm. Chris Brown's here. Yeah. I know coming up later in the month, there's a few more celebs that are going to be gracing us with their presence. Oh, who's coming? I've heard, I've heard as well. Well, 50 Cent might be in town, <laughs> Little Bird told me. <laughs> We've also got some amazing tennis players that are also going to be heading down into town. There's lots going on actually. Yeah, this yeah. is it. And I mean, a, a lot of people stay uh, and that's what I realised uh, during the expo as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, it was their first time in the, in the region, their first time seeing a big event of that magnitude put together. Uh, and they were so impressed by it, a lot of people just stay on. Yeah. And just and just thought, oh, I like this place. And I actually know some people who have moved now and living in Dubai uh, from just being at the expo. Uh, and, and really liked it and enjoyed it and said, right, I'm moving. So yeah, it has that impact. Yeah, there was a lot of people that I actually interviewed at the time that said, it's my first time coming to the region. It's my first time coming to Dubai. And they were just mesmerized by it all, you know? So I can definitely see that happening. We yes, do have yeah. a magical effect on people. So much happening at COP. And here's what else is happening on tonight's show. Yes, our very own Ash caught up with Sadhguru at COP28 to discuss all things soil to mitigate climate change. And also I got the chance to catch up with the co-founder of Investors for Climate at COP28 to discuss carbon taxing and sustainable climate finance. Plus we've got a famous singer at the end of the show. Please stay tuned. <laughs> 